Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. Call me old school, but with so much focus on side-by-sides nowadays, I get a little excited when there's something big to talk about in the ATV industry. So when Can-Am pulled the sheets off a completely overhauled line of Outlanders a few months back, complete with a new single cylinder engine available in either 40 or 50 horsepower versions, I was online right away trying to learn everything I could about these machines. One of the first questions I had when I saw this new engine was, what's gonna happen to the iconic 62 horsepower Rotax 650 V-Twin? After all, I did just test ride the Outlander Max featuring this engine, and I'll tell you straight up, it might be my favorite engine in the ATV industry. Thankfully, a quick browse of the Can-Am website revealed that the 650 is still available in the Max 6x6 DPS, the base model Renegade, and the Renegade 650 XMR. That's not to say that it'll stay in circulation forever, but for now it is still part of Can-Am's offering, and who knows, maybe the 650 V-Twin will show up again in the Outlander next season. So what's the logic in developing a single cylinder engine that actually produces less horsepower? We think Can-Am had its sights clearly set on taking market share away from Yamaha by targeting Grizzly owners that are interested in a single cylinder engine producing similar horsepower. One quick look at the cost savings shows a difference of nearly two grand, which is significant. Price is such an important factor for ATV buyers, and with side-by-sides creeping ever closer to the 50 grand mark, having a value line of ATVs available is more important than ever. Value is one thing, but it can't mean cheaping out on quality. There has to be a balance to attract and satisfy buyers. An overview of the Outlander Pro HT7 Hunting Edition shows us that Can-Am has paid attention to detail and didn't just slap a couple of stickers on this machine and call it new. Its new tubular steel chassis design borrowed from the X3 platform adds considerable durability. Front and rear arched A-arms aid in delivering 13 inches of ground clearance, plus its twin tube shocks feature 9 and 3 quarter inches of travel up front and 10 and a quarter inches of travel out back, and are tuned stiffer to accommodate work duties. The suspension is actually pretty decent. I beat the heck out of this machine on some pretty aggressive trails and it stood up to the abuse. The shocks performed really well and I didn't experience any jarring hits. That said, if this was my own machine, I might consider upgrading to a premium shock with more adjustability. However, I confidently ride this ATV in stock form. The underside is complete with a full skid plate and these aluminum A-arm guards front and back look classy as heck and offer considerable protection. Plus this beefy front brush guard and this rear bumper make this thing look tough as nails while providing additional safety and protection for both the rider and the ATV. 26 inch XPS Trail King tires wrapped around blacked out 12 inch cast aluminum wheels are a decent stock tire for this machine. They're grippy and durable and provide enough traction for trail riding and work duties. I was actually really impressed with the performance of these tires. It rained the entire time I was doing my testing, creating some pretty slippery conditions. And when I was certain these tires were gonna slip and slide over the rocks, they held firm, providing the type of traction I'd expect from an aftermarket tire. Ergonomics of this machine are excellent whether you're sitting or standing, and sight lines over the front rack are clean, providing clear visibility of upcoming trail junk. The new design of this machine looks meaner and looks like it sits taller, but the seating position is comfortable and the handlebar position is at the right height. And the larger footwells provide enough space for your feet to move around, while the raised foot pegs are grippy enough to keep your feet planted when you want them to be, and the footwells also feature a super thick skid plate for further protection. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. Like I said before, Can-Am paid such close attention to the small details. Every time I sit down, there's something new that I like about this machine. For example, the front rack features this massive link accessory storage bin, big enough to store a tow rope, a jacket, or anything else you might need for your ride. There's also this deep well storage in front of the rider, large enough for your phone, wallet, or water bottle, and features dual USB ports for charging your phone or accessory, highlighted in vibrant blue. This rear rack seems a bit odd to me. 
Clearly it's designed to accommodate one of the 125 link accessories available for this ATV, but I feel like a regular rack in either steel or composite would have been the better choice for this ATV and its intended market. That said, we have a ton of accessories we'll be adding to this machine to make it more capable for hunting. So stay tuned for that segment and see what we come up with. The Outlander Pro is also equipped with a 3,500 pound HD winch and super bright LED headlights operated by a new toggle switch cluster. This cluster features high and low beam and then press down and hold to turn the headlights off for daytime riding. One of the coolest features of the all new Outlander Pro is actually a sum of features that allows for complete customization of your ride depending on conditions or work duties. ITC allows you to toggle between sport, normal and work modes with the push of a button. I rode most of the day in sport mode, which provided more aggressive shift points, but I made sure to spend some time in normal, which mellowed out throttle tip in and provided smooth acceleration for all day riding. The Pro also features IEB or intelligent engine braking, which allows you to select the amount of engine braking assist you prefer. Minimum input would be suitable for trail ripping, while max engine braking input might be best for when towing a small trailer or an implement. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but Can-Am's tri-mode dynamic power steering might be the best in the industry. Press and hold the start button, which is also the reverse override button, to toggle between minimum, medium, and maximum settings. Minimum input is great for guys that don't care for a great deal of assist and like to feel every nuance of the trail. And I felt like max just provided too much assist. For me, medium is still the sweet spot and provides that perfect balance of easy handling and reducing feedback up through the handlebars. Any combination of all these modes in addition to selectable two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive and Visco four-lock front diff really does allow you to tailor your ride to specifically what you want, which results in excellent handling and ride quality as well as responsive power. I wasn't sure what to expect out of this all-new Rotax HD7 single, but after riding it for a full day, I'm here to tell you this engine is a winner. Boasting acclaimed 50 horsepower and mated to the P-Drive primary, power delivery is smooth and linear. At idle, this engine has a nice low rumble similar to the Grizzly, and initial throttle tip-in won't lift the tires, but still comes on strong and holds through mid-range, and feels like there's endless power at top end. We made sure to do our duty and held this thing wide open on our closed course straightaway, and reached speeds of up to 110 kilometers an hour, which is close to 70 miles an hour. This thing's got juice at every squeeze. One last feature I need to mention is the all-new speed regulator, located on the left handlebar switch cluster, which allows you to set a maximum speed for the ATV. Set your desired speed and then adjust with your thumb and finger up to a maximum of 70 kilometers an hour and a minimum of eight kilometers an hour. This is perfect for when you're towing a spreader or sprayer implement and maintaining an even speed is important, or for when keeping a steady speed when towing your buddy out of the woods. It's also a great way to keep from getting a speeding ticket in the highly regulated zones. Can-Am's aim has always been to help riders get out and do more, whether it's a hard day's ride or a hard day's work. And with the intention of improving rider experience, the all-new Outlander Pro HD7 Hunting Edition has hit that nail squarely on the head. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. In past episodes, we've met Hunter Lovelace and checked out his very unique collection of sport ATVs. Previously, we checked out his prized possession, his Honda 250R, but this week we're going to check out his Cannondale Cannibal 440. We have seen your setup, all of your vehicles, and it's become very clear that you are a Cannondale guy. I am, and, Cannondale and, and through like and through. One of maybe not that many out there, like you're, you're kind of the guy to go to if you want to know about Cannondales. Yeah, in Canada, I would say I would be anyways. Right on. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a bunch of them, but you were saying that this is probably the most stock. Yeah, for sure it is. This is a 2003 Cannondale Cannibal 440. And uh, as far as stock goes, yes, this one is how it, looks i mean like compared to like my highly modified one that doesn't really look like much of a cannondale and then my other one that's got the cut fenders and just that one they, they just look a little bit different than what they did from the factory my girlfriend actually rides this i built this for my girlfriend serena and uh she rides it in the sand dunes and it works just perfect for her so <laughs> let's talk about what is a cannondale because there's yep. a lot of people out there 
that are going to be watching this who have no idea yeah. that A, Cannondale ever made True ATVs enough. and B, what is a Cannondale ATV? So go through me for me what a Cannondale ATV is and why it's unique. So Cannondale is a bicycle company. They built bicycles. Mm -hmm. They still build bicycles. In the early 2000s, they, uh, they attempted to build a sport quad and a dirt bike. Um, and they succeeded in certain areas, but failed in lots of others. So they were a very short produced machine, like for their time frame, they were built from 2001 to 2003. Um, not a lot were made. Um, they didn't sell a lot, mainly because of the price tag. So tell me about some of the unique features of the frame because there's quite a bit of stuff that goes on with the frame in this vehicle. Yeah. That's really, really different. Yeah, there is. So when I first got my very first Cannondale, I wasn't even sure how to do an oil change on it. And funny enough, the oil actually goes through the frame. A lot of people would say, does the frame get hot? Not really. Hmm. No, it gets a little warm, but it's not, you wouldn't, it's surprising. It doesn't. Well, it would be a great heat sink too. Yeah. Massive heat sink. Yeah. Better than an oil cooler. Absolutely. Well, and even stuff that they built on their own, like right down to their own throttle block. Everything. As far as modifications to this one, I mean, obviously you've got an exhaust, the Nerf bars aren't stock, um, but for the most part, it looks pretty, pretty factory. The Nerf bars were added um, to, for safety factors. You put a, a Bling Star front bumper on it, just it looks a little bit, little bit more trick in my eyes. We put an HMF pipe on it, just to wake it up a little bit more, which actually made a huge difference to be honest. And then I made a set of custom graphics for it um, for my girlfriend, Kofel Cycle. That's what we call it, the Kofel Cycle machine. Um, we also, I was also able to get a, a custom throttle or a brake reservoir cap made as well. You said there's a little story behind that. There is, yes. Kofel Cycle is, uh, is a, was a company that my girlfriend's father um, had before his passing uh, a few years ago. So. We, uh, I thought I'd just add a little touch. To kind of a tribute bike. So for you to ride Cannondales, you've got to plan ahead. You do, absolutely. So we, uh, most of my riding I do is at Silver Lake Sand Dunes in Michigan. We have such a blast there. Um, it's such a fun place. You go there, you have to take spare parts. I mean, I always take a spare machine with me. Um, whether it's a Cannondale or not, but I mean, I'll take my Cannondale, she'll bring hers, but you have to bring, bring, you have to kind of plan ahead for sure, because you break something, you can't just go walking across the road to the parts supplier and say, I need a part for a Cannondale because- Do you mind showing time, me your parts? Yeah, absolutely. Cause this, you showed me this before, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, so I kind of, uh, I kind of have my own little stash of new Cannondale parts kind of going through the chassis and oil filters, sprockets. All this stuff is Cannondale specific. The history of this vehicle is important to the, to the industry. There's, yeah. there's a lot more to it than just they built it and yes, it failed, but it changed things before it failed. They were kind of the first to attempt a high performance four stroke race quad. The other thing about this bike that I think is really important that, that needs to be mentioned is that this was built, designed, built 100% in the USA. In 110 And nobody had ever done that before. It was the first domestically produced sport quad. Yes. I mean, among some of the first produced quads in general, yep. you know, designed and built in the USA. Well, listen, man, thanks for walking us around a, an interesting piece of ATV history here. Yeah, it's absolutely. something that uh, a lot of people have never seen and probably will never see. A lot of people have never had the privilege to, yep. to even see one. And it, it is something very unique and you can spend a lot of time just looking around it and seeing how certain things were, were designed and built. It's a good thing there's people like you out here keeping them alive for us. Yeah, so exactly. We can, so we can check them out. Yeah, for sure. Right on, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. And by Mad Ramps. Leave the trailer and go. Make sure you hold on tight because this test ride is on something no other manufacturer has ever tried to touch. Our world is obsessed with performance 
Whether it's pulling over 100 horsepower per liter of displacement in supercars or jamming the biggest motor available under the hood of a hopped up sedan to 800 plus horsepower pickup trucks, we love power and performance. And that's nothing new for Polaris, who broke all barriers with the two liter, 225 horse Pro R Razor. And today I'm on an off-road vehicle that you straddle. And that's also in the category of biggest and most powerful, but a slightly different product than you may be used to seeing it in. The 2023 Polaris Sportsman XP 1000S is the pinnacle of power and performance. If you want the best sport utility ATV ever produced, this is it. In fact, no other manufacturer has ever tried to compare. At a shocking 55 inches of width, this is the biggest footprint of an ATV ever produced. It boasts 14.5 inches of clearance and 14 inches of rear travel and is as stable at high speeds as it is confidence inspiring. While this Sportsman has some visual cues of a traditional Sportsman XP, the look is where the similarities end. Now, a few years back, Luke was the one who did the test ride on the first version of the XP1000S, and I was a little bit ticked off, if I'm being honest. Not because I didn't love the vehicle, but because I didn't get to do the test ride, but today, I get to. Now, there's some things that have to be discussed about the 1000S before we go much further, because while it is the most capable ATV ever produced by Polaris, it's not a pure sport. It's not a supercar of the ATV world. The bodywork of the Sportsman and the racks and hitch receiver state otherwise. So don't write this thing off as something that's just for going fast. This ATV is incredibly versatile and comes with a 3,500 pound Polaris HD winch, as well as the two inch receiver that'll pull 1,750 pounds. And the built-in racking have a 500 pound capacity. It's as serious about performance as it is about putting in a hard day's work on the farm or out to the deer stand. Now, under the hood of this Sportsman sits the 89 horse ProStar mill, and it works awesome. Linking up with that is the multi-select power steering that also works in harmony with the Pro Steer front end. And the Pro Steer front end makes bump steer a thing of the past, but it is exclusive only to the Scrambler and Sportsman XP1000S models. Now, to argue anything but that this front end is the absolute best performing four-wheel drive ATV suspension ever produced would be like arguing that gravity doesn't exist. It's futile. While work and play is a reality for this sportsman, you can put the entire 14 inches of rear suspension travel to work out on the highest speed trails and find that there's nothing else like this ATV. It's an absolute beast. From the hard pack wider trails, to whoops and g-out bumps, to the slower and more technical terrain you find headed back into the bush on your local trails. The rolled IRS chews through bumps that you'd wince at with the competitor's best comparable suspensions. Up front, you have high arched A-arms and almost 12 inches of suspension travel that give you buttery smooth compliance and go through just about anything. And the ground clearance, well, let me tell you, at 14 inches, the only thing comparable is a jacked up mud runner. But with all that said, one of the shocking realities of the XP1000S is the fact that it still uses 27 inch tires. They really aren't that big of a tire for a rig this large in stature but I appreciate the traditional tire setup with the Duro Power Grip V2s all the way around in a nine inch wide front and 11 inch wide rear. If Polaris had gone any bigger, the sportiness would suffer and making this rig any taller would most certainly start to be felt as the CG naturally has to increase with this much ground clearance. With that said, the 55 inches of width is the sweet spot and Polaris knows just that. It's not too wide that it's awkward on traditional trails, but at the same time, it's wide enough that it allows for that super long travel suspension, as well as the insane ground clearance. It gives you absolute comfort, control, and stability. It's actually hard for me to quantify the stability you feel at speeds higher than you'd expect to feel stable with the Sportsman XP1000S. Now let's all keep in mind that this may be the most expensive ATV ever produced besides the Scrambler sibling. So you should be getting groundbreaking performance. And while there really isn't much to gripe about with something this well thought through and designed, the fact that the shocks went from a Walker Evans piggyback on Luke's test ride unit, now to a steel body no name shock for 23 is a little bit disappointing as that premium suspension package really did fit the build. When everything from the brake lights to top pod and headlights are all premium LED, as well as the ultimate series front and rear bumpers, the higher end shocks on the first year models were a nice inclusion. Now, I know that I focus on performance a lot, but that's because it's just so hard to ignore with an ATV like this. But keep in mind, 
This does have serious work capacity. The front rack has a capacity of 200 pounds. The rear rack is at 300 pounds. And these racks aren't just an afterthought and thrown on here. They have multiple really significant aluminum tie down points for ratchet straps and other tie downs. And then on top of that, there's so many lock and ride points that you can accessorize this ATV to do exactly what you want it to do. When the 1000S models first came out, we questioned Polaris why they built them. And their response across the board was because they could. Polaris isn't giving up on the ATV market just because side-by-sides are gaining in popularity. And pushing forwards and continuing to make the XP1000S models shows their commitment to the ATV industry. And after putting in some serious seat time on this one, I gotta tell you, I'm sure glad that they are.